Well, good morning, aviators. Today is May 9th, 2023. And uh, I'm going to do the carb sink pneumatic method today. I tried it last week. Uh, my gauges were screwed up. Uh, if you look at that video I did about the gauges, you'll understand why and what you need to do with the gauges. So anyway, uh, we're going to do the pneumatic sink. First thing I'm going to sink is the idle and I'll be doing that with the idle screws. I'm not going to be using the barrel adjustment for that. Uh, I need to get the idle adjusted. If it's, mine's about 1900 right now, which is too high. So I'm going to be adding uh, vacuum pressure uh, to get it synced. And basically, this, this whole thing is really pretty simple. Uh, f closed uh, idle on the idle stops is the most vacuum. The least vacuum is fully wide open and you use the, uh, again, the idle screws to adjust the idle vacuum and you use the barrel adjuster here to adjust uh, the uh, vacuum after you get it off the idle stops. I'm probably going to adjust it at 2500 RPM, which is for me uh, the, probably the best because you get the most out of balance and uh, stuff going on at uh, low RPMs, higher RPMs. Uh, the butterfly valves and the carburetors are pretty wide open and you've got this compensating tube that uh, really helps uh, balance the things out. Uh, first things first, I will tell you that I have taken a two-day Rotax class. I am licensed by the FAA to work on my plane. Uh, I took a, another FAA class to do that. Uh, so unless you're well qualified, do not attempt this at home. You could easily kill yourself or kill somebody else with uh, working around a spinning prop. So this is for those people, just information. Uh, anybody else that's qualified, you know, maybe you'll find this useful, maybe you won't. Uh, there's a several uh, videos on how to sync the carburetors. Most of them use the carb mate, uh, too expensive. I don't want to do that. So basically the tools I'll be using today are uh, the gauges, uh, Phillips head, maybe, probably not. That, maybe not. Uh, this will adjust the uh, uh, idle screws. Then I'll be using these two nine millimeter wrenches uh, to go on these nuts on the barrel adjuster, if I need to do that. I've done the mechanical sink, and I su suggest you do that before you do the pneumatic sink, although I don't think you have to, uh, but it would help. Uh, other things, uh, ear protection and a rope to tie the tail down. I'm gonna have all wheels chalked. I'm gonna have the brake on since I'm doing this by myself. So first things first, I'm gonna to need to set up the gauges and I'm gonna to need to take this off. I tried the other side uh, last week, I'll show you that. Tried this side, could not get it off uh, without taking the other side off it, primarily because these standoffs that they've got on this uh, crossover tube really kept it from from coming off uh, there's a guy named Larry Medrick that uh, said that you just squirt some WD-40 and then it'll slide right off well I did that it didn't work uh, so anyway I'll get this set up and show taking this off and hooking up the gauges okay so first things first we're gonna take this spring off and you sometimes you can do it with your fingers other times it's a little tougher. Uh, screwdriver help. There we go. Okay, that's off. Now we're going to loosen this clamp. And I'm hoping not to take it all the way off. It's kind of a blur to get back on as I learned last week. I'm hoping to take it enough to where I can slide it back. Break it loose. didn't want to break loose, so I'm going to take it all the way off, which I didn't want to do, but that's that. Okay, now it's loose. Put it back there. Okay, finally, it was not easy, even though it's on the easier side.
I'm going to hook up the gauges. So this should be simple, hopefully. That plugs into there. And this plugs in over here. Remember last time this was not all that easy to get on, but... And there we go. So the gauges are all set. Now what I'll do is I'll pull the plate out, uh, get it all chalked, brakes on, start it up. We'll have to wait a while for the uh, oil temperature to come up, uh, but we should be able to do our thing. So see you after I pull it out. Okay, as you can see, the plane's pulled out, and I've got the tail tied down. I've got chocks on all the wheels. I'll have the brakes on shortly when I get in the plane, and we'll get it started up. Chocks, chocks, safety, safety. Be very careful. Okay, we'll get it started up and see what happens. Okay, looks like I got it within about a quarter of a pound. Uh, the uh, idle is adjusted properly and it's balanced at idle. So that's gonna work real well. Although, you know, I hardly ever use idle except when I'm on final and just before I land. Uh, otherwise I run it at like 2000 RPM and keep it smooth. So I think that's it. I think we're done. Hallelujah. Glad this is over for a while. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. hope it uh, gave you some information, and I'll see you next time.